Peter Zimbor here for 8CountNews.com and AnySportsTV.com, joined by the president of the WBC, Mr. Jose Suleiman. Jose, thanks for joining me here for an interview. I want to ask you a few questions about the WBC. One topic that has been hot as of late has been the middleweight division and the WBC title in particular. I know you and I spoke about it off camera earlier. Jose Sul Jose. Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. won the WBC middleweight title recently, making him the first Mexican to win a middleweight belt. He won that title by defeating Sebastian Zibik. Originally, Sergio Martinez was the WBC middleweight champion. He lost that belt due to circumstance when HBO did not want him to face his mandatory Sebastian Zibik. Therefore, he lost the belt. It was reported by ESPN.com's Dan Rayfield yesterday that Samson Lukowitz, who is Sergio Martinez's advisor, had worked out a deal with the WBC that Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. will get one optional defense of his title that he just won and then will be mandated to fight Sergio Martinez. Is that correct? It is not a deal. It's exactly what is stated in the rules and regulations of the WBC that uh, Chavez will have one optional defense with the winner being committed to fight Sergio Martinez. Sergio Martinez is above because he is the champion of the Diamond Belt, which is the superior uh, championship that the WBC has. So I believe that by fighting whoever, Chavez and, and Martinez, it will be a great fight and a great champion. I wanted to ask you about this as well. Mexico's Marco Antonio Rubio won a title eliminator over David Lemieux a few months ago. Where does he stand in the title picture? Well, he stays high in the ratings, but it was not a final title elimination. A final title elimination, he's got to place him at number one in mandatory challenger. But it was a final elimination, so he moved up some places from where he was placed and now he's in an upper position. So right now Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. has an optional defense, then he'll be mandated to fight Sergio Martinez if he gets by that first optional defense, and then somewhere along the way Marco Antonio Rubio gets a shot. There was some confusion, I'm glad you cleared it up for us. No, there should not be any confusion. The promoter wanted a specific eliminator with his factor in Canada, and we accepted it because it was not a final elimination. So when fights like that take place, the winner of those elimination bouts is just rated as high as possible above the fighter that he defeated. And that's what happened. And, and I think that it was a good promotion. And, uh, and we are here to help promoters to develop boxing, to develop boxers, not to put barriers so that they cannot promote. We have to bring matters of interest to the public. And if it is legal, if it's decent, if it's within the rules and regulations, we do it. Well, I want to thank you for your time. Before I let you go, I want to let the folks know at home that you are here in Brockton, Massachusetts. The WBC is helping to fund a statue of Brockton's hometown hero, the great undefeated heavyweight champion, Rocky Marciano. I wanted to ask you this for the folks at home before I let you go. In appreciation of your efforts in getting the statue built, a local restaurant has named a pizza after you. There's now a Jose Suleiman ham and cheese pizza out there because that's apparently your favorite pizza. How do you feel about that? I feel very well, but he who has a pizza like that has to know that he has to eat a lot, not only one. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm honored and I'm very happy. And, and I, well, I don't know what to say, but one thing for sure, when I go to a restaurant, I'm going to have a Jose Suleiman pizza. And also put my, my cap of the Brockton and play baseball with them because I used to play ball. Well, that's the only president of a boxing organization I know of that has a pizza named after him, the WBC's Jose Suleiman. Thanks for watching here on 8CountNews.com and AnySportsTV.com.